there is a stark choice to notice and debate out in the states. Florida, Texas, Arkansas, North and South Carolina now moving to require you to take a drug test, forced drug testing as part of getting the unemployment benefits that you paid for when you were working. Arizona and Georgia passing laws that force anyone to prove they're in the country legally whenever a police officer wants to know. Papers, please. States across the country saying they will decide whether or not you can get an abortion and what your doctor is allowed to say to you about abortions in your doctor's appointment. The government will give you a script. The government will decide what your doctor says and what you are allowed to do. The government decides now, not you. State governments in Wisconsin, Michigan, Ohio, and Tennessee are acting to strip people of their union rights. You might have heard something about that. This is big, intrusive, activist government put into motion and into law at state houses around the country. Our Republican-controlled legislatures right now are filled with politicians who campaigned on small government and respecting the will of the voter, trademark. And then they got into office and they really started doing quite radically the opposite. In Montana this month, Democratic Governor Brian Schweitzer, remember he heated up his veto brand for a long string of bills that had been passed by the new Republican legislature in Montana. One of those bills, a bill to recriminalize medical marijuana. The Republicans' bill would overturn a law passed by the people of Montana in a referendum in 2004. Another one of those Republican-passed laws would have allowed the return of cyanide leaching in mines. Voters had outlawed that through referendum not once but twice in Montana. But the Republican bill would have overturned what the voters said they wanted. In Wisconsin, the Republican legislature overturned a Milwaukee referendum that mandated that companies give their workers sick leave. When that got up for the vote in Milwaukee, it got 69% of the vote. The people of Milwaukee want that. Governor Scott Walker says he will overrule those voters. The state legislature will step in. The state will step in. They will overrule those voters. Governor Walker says he will sign that bill. In Missouri last week, the Republican legislature there voted to overturn a citizen referendum that bans puppy mills. Rules about cage size, rules on sick animals, feeding, and stuff like that. The people of Missouri voted against conditions like these for dogs. And the Republican legislature has now voted to overturn the vote of the people of Missouri. So much for all that will of the people, will of the people um, stuff that everybody's been campaigning on this year. As far removed as all this seems from the slow motion kabuki theater of budget season in Washington, as local and specific as this stuff seems at first glance, I tell you, if political discourse in this country were not dominated by the Beltway media, the entire country tonight, the entire country tonight would be talking about this instead. We'll be talking about puppies in Missouri and Benton Harbor's town park and whether Benton Harbor gets to keep it because they want to. This is the vision of governance in America we ought to be debating. Because regardless of what people say they're going to do when they get in office, this is what's on offer now that they've got there. Joining us now is the Democratic mayor of Lansing, Michigan, Verge Bernero. Mayor Bernero ran in the 2010 gubernatorial race against the current governor of Michigan, Republican Rick Snyder. Mr. Mayor, thank you very much for being with us tonight. Rachel, thank you for being uh, such a patriot uh, and a believer in democracy for bringing this to the fore. Our founding fathers are rolling over in their graves at what's happening in Michigan. Uh, it is dire and it is sad, a sad day for democracy. It's really everything you said. Uh, it is taxation without representation. You know, uh, it, it is the corporatization. We're seeing the corporatization of our democratic process. Today in Michigan, they trained something, the, the, the government is training 200 EFS emergency financial managers. Uh, this is an industry now uh, that, uh, that the, the administration is going to be in. They have lowered the bar for taking over cities. It used to be EFMs were a very rarely used thing. Their powers were circumscribed. They were to go in and deal with the finances and work with the powers that be. Now they are in charge. Now they can fire elected officials. It is unprecedented in Michigan and I think in America and it's dangerous. I, I saw a Bloomberg News report about those trends trainings for the emergency financial managers. And one of the things that left out uh, for me was, as you're saying, this is something that used to exist in a very small scale, reserved for real emergencies. They're talking about broadly expanding this and using this with something more than a dozen different tri triggers that can, uh, that, that can start a process like this where a town just gets taken over. And what Bloomberg pointed out was that it is investment banks and law firms and other people who have been involved in sort of corporate takeovers, doing the stuff in the private sector, who are now 
now hoping to get in on this as a hot industry in the public sector. Do you see this as a, as, as a privatization of, of, of democracy, of public processes? Exactly. And this is why I say corporatization, uh, profitization of local government. It, it, it is unprecedented. It's dangerous. Uh, it's incredible that it's come to this. You know, I, I'm a believer in democracy. This is autocracy. I, I think the governor must have asked himself, WWPD, what would Putin do? You know, this is the kind of thing in Russia, in Soviet Russia, what is becoming increasingly Soviet Russia again, uh, they appoint the governors and, and the mayors. And that's basically what we're headed for. And they've lowered the bar. So uh, it, it's very easy to fall into this. And not only that, Rachel, but, you know, they've cut uh, revenue sharing for, for cities. So they, they're really cutting support for cities, in essence, you know, uh, shooting you in the foot and then blaming you for limping. Uh, we, we're struggling to survive in this economy, and the state is doing nothing to help us. In fact, they're hindering us. And the only thing they're doing then is threatening us with this privatization, this corporatization, with a, a, a czar who is going to be appointed, who is not going to work with the local authorities. You know, never mind what happened to local control. I thought the Republican Party was the party of less control, less government, and local control. They have thrown local control out the window. This is a return to King George. You know, this is what the American Revolution was about. Is uh, this what the 2000 campaign, 2010 campaign was for there? When you were running against Rick Snyder, and Michigan voters are given a choice about who they want for governor, is this what the campaign was about? Is this what Republicans, including Rick Snyder, said they were going to do to Michigan if they got into power? Well, absolutely not. And uh, I mean, we, we tried to get out of him what he would do. Uh, there, there, there wasn't a lot. There, were, there was one debate, exactly one. Uh, he said very little. I think a lot of the Republican candidates for governor said very little. Uh, they had a script. They stuck to it. Uh, and certainly, there was nothing like this talked about. In fact, there was talk about helping cities. You know, uh, I'm a mayor. I was running for governor. Uh, I know that our cities need to be the hub of the wheel instead of the hole in the donut. There was a lot of talk about how to help cities. And I haven't seen any of it. We're not getting any help. What we're doing is getting the rug pulled out from underneath us. And then these incredible, unprecedented powers, this power grab uh, coming from the executive office is unprecedented. And, and they've lowered the bar so much. You know, the governor's office is right across the street from me. I'm afraid if I sneeze loud enough, uh, that could be grounds for an EFM. It, they, they have really made it easy uh, to take over a city. Uh, and, and you'd think that normally the state government wouldn't want to do that. Normally the state government would be a assisting and trying to help you on your own, maybe move you back. If, like I say, if there was an EFM, he would be in and out quickly. He would make adjustments. He would work with the locals, try to build an empowered local control. They're doing just the opposite. They're coming in and wiping out the local boards and the local institutions. It's incredible. And so what are you going to be left with? At the end of the day, what are these EFMs going to, be, going to have accomplished? They're going to wipe out uh, a, a lot of city services. Where is the economy going to be of the region? How are we going to grow as a state if we're not enabling local control, if we're not building up our cities and helping our cities to become strong. Well, in Benton Harbor, there'll be uh, three holes of that golf course, I'm told, uh, which will have a beautiful view uh, of Lake Michigan. That's apparently what they will be presiding over there. That belongs uh, to the people. That happens. That's exactly right. Virg Bernero, Democratic Mayor of Lansing, Michigan. Thank you for your time tonight, sir. Thank you, and uh, do not sneeze. Appreciate your time. <laughs> the interview tonight features the woman nominated to be chairwoman of the Democratic National Committee. A lot to talk about with her. Please stay tuned for that.